Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to part three or four, I've kind of lost count, of our game against XTRG in War in the Pacific. XTRG is playing as the uh, Japanese and I am playing as the Ally. In today's episode, we'll take a look at the combat results from December 9th, 1941, and we will play through the Allied turn of that same day. Uh, if you'll remember, obviously Pearl Harbor happened a few days ago. Uh, the British Task Force Z was able to escape, and the Japanese have begun uh, moving forces across Southeast Asia in an effort to build their greater East Co prosperity sphere and uh, take uh, locations like Singapore uh, and other uh, facilities in an effort to expand, build a defensive corridor, uh, and stop the Allied counteroffensive, which will undoubtedly occur at some point in the future. We're trying to stop that. And that's kind of the current state. The Japanese haven't landed on Luzon yet, so the main island of the Philippines is thus far still safe. And we can see here this uh, turn is beginning to play out with an Allied submarine launching torpedoes against Japanese shipping. My assumption is that uh, this turn will result in an initial Japanese landing on the island of Luzon uh, and the uh, sort of death knell or the beginning of the end for the Allied armies under General MacArthur on the island, but we'll see how things result thus far. I'm kind of surprised he hasn't landed there yet. He actually hasn't landed on Guam yet either, so uh, XTRG is following a somewhat unorthodox strategy uh, to subduing uh, the Allies. You can see here some initial submarine operations and in and around uh, Pearl Harbor and the Philippines, uh, attempting to torpedo a destroyer tender. Uh, so far, uh, no one has landed a punch yet. Although, remember, all of these combat results you're going to see here are uh, skewed in fog of war. So uh, what you see may not actually be what's occurring. You'll even get false reports of ships. But you can see here the Japanese are landing near Aparai uh, on the northeastern coast of Luzon. They've landed some troops here, and I don't have any defensive troops in place, so uh, the Japanese are going to establish a beachhead on the northeastern coast of Luzon here on this turn on December 9th, 1941. Meanwhile, they've already landed forces in Malaya, and we're in the process of falling our troops back towards Singapore, so we'll see how this all plays out. Uh, there does appear to be a surface engagement occurring here near the Philippines. It looks like torpedo boats on the right, Japanese transports on the left, my torpedo boats didn't engage, which is kind of frustrating. That looked incredibly, like an incredibly vulnerable enemy task force uh, that we could have potentially ravaged. I didn't see much in the way of enemy surface ships in my brief glance at what they had there. Damn it! That's really frustrating! Alright, so air phase is beginning. We're getting some interceptors up to hopefully uh, reduce the threat against the Philippines there. You can see here we got 25 Warhawks, 11 War... Or tw I guess 36 versions of the P-40 up, 18 other fighters. We're claiming two Zeros destroyed, four Nels, one Betty, with the loss of just one aircraft. So that's a very successful uh, cap operation. Uh, but now a much larger enemy force of Zeros is escorting a smaller force of bombers. Uh, against, where where are they bombing here? Is it uh, Clark Field? And uh, you can see here we, we lost several aircraft. Looks like five on the ground. The enemy lost two in the air. They also got a couple of runway hits here. And another raid with substantial zero fighter escort. We're not going to be able to penetrate that uh, fighter cordon. Unescorted bombing raids coming in here that we can't really do much about. Okay, we're attempting to bomb an enemy surface force. We're not claiming any hits there. We've got two DO 24K1s. Okay. 
attacking there, no results. Hudson's getting blasted out of the sky by any cap. Looks like the Japanese have air cover over Kotobaru. We're losing some aircraft in an attempt to penetrate that, but we don't have any fighter escort, so not accomplishing much there so far. Man, that PT boat thing is still bothering me. I certainly should have had a more aggressive commander in place, I guess. Mels are attacking some destroyers escaping from Hong Kong. Now, destroyers are highly maneuverable, so it doesn't look like the Nels were able to hit anything with their torpedoes. finally established his uh, combat air patrols over the Malay Peninsula. Meanwhile, a much larger raid of bombers against our destroyers. They're, it sounds like they're dropping torpedoes. No hits, though, so more torpedoes being wasted. 18 bombers dropped 18 inch, or 18, uh, 18, oh my goodness, 18 bombers dropped 18 Type 21 torpedoes. No hits on our destroyers there. Fast little nimble craft that they are. Looks like our S boat's getting depth charged. More troops landing on the northern tip of Luzon, this time at Vegan. So the Japanese have two landing beaches here, both uh, without any of our troops. We've pulled our troops back, so we've got no troops defending the landing zones. And the Japanese continue their assault at uh, Hong Kong here. Um, we lost some casualties, and, but didn't lose any units. So 43 casualties, two squads destroyed, but the enemy attack did not, it was just a bombardment attack, so just artillery. Meanwhile, Cote Peru, it looks like they uh, reduced the fortifications there, so we lost some casualties here on the eastern tip of uh, Mal the Malay Peninsula. Our own bombardment attack went through as well but no actual combat result there in terms of they didn't take they didn't take the uh, the base so that's good for us Manila meanwhile is building fortifications so that's good the more we can dig in in the Philippines the better of course it does chew up supply to build that out so that all right so let's jump back in and see what actually happened now that the fog of war at least on our casualties are gone so we lost very heavy air uh, losses this turn we lost 24 aircraft and air-to-air -air engagements frankly with all the zeros engaging our aircraft as we tried to break through the cordons around like Kotobaru and for example that's not a surprise we also lost three aircraft destroyed on the field likely around Clark Field and we lost seven aircraft uh, as operational losses, so they uh, weren't shot down in combat, but they crashed on landing or other things like that, or maybe when they landed they were deemed a, a total loss. The Japanese didn't lose an insignificant number of aircraft either, however. They lost 19 aircraft uh, in air-to-air -air engagements today, two more to flak, and six operational losses. So they lost 27 aircraft total. Uh, versus our 34, but given our industrial superiority, I'd call that a victory there. Uh, we're claiming the Japanese are up to 118 aircraft loss versus our 96. That's a huge victory so far. Today we're claiming 13 Nels, likely all around Clark Field, and 10 Bettys, similarly near Clark Field. We're also admitting to 7 P-40 Warhawks shot down, 5 Zero shot down, that's a good number there, 5 Hudsons, 5 Blenheims, 4 P-35s, 4 P-26s, two Lilies, two Warhawks, two Viblisses, and a handful of smaller groups there. So uh, if we take a look at top pilots here, uh, we've lost our first of our top pilots here, uh, killed in action. That's D. Moresi uh, of the 35th uh, Pursuit Group, uh, P-40 pilot based out of the Philippines. Uh, and we lost a couple other uh, pilots wounded. Um, still nobody with more than two kills in air-to-air -air engagements thus far. 
uh, and a total of nine pilots KIA, nine wounded in action uh, so far. Um, let's see here. Ship sunk. Anything lost last turn? Nothing. So nothing lost last turn. If we go back to last month um, so far, just the Langley, the... Uh, uh, ship tender, which I think was actually the U.S.'s first carrier, but it looks like it was in a tender uh, configuration sunk at Manila on December 8th, so December, the second day of the war. Um, doesn't look like we've lost anything else since then. December 7th and 8th are the only days any ships were sunk. So, casualties there, not too terrible. Let's go ahead and take stock of what's going on here in uh, Manila. Uh, we can see here that the Japanese have troops ashore at Kotoburu, uh, up here in the northern edge. Uh, we had a battle there where uh, we lost one of our fortifications. The 8th India Brigade fought valiantly and held the enemy back, so despite the fact that they lost that battle because the fortifications were reduced by one, um, no one, they didn't take the base yet. I would kind of expect the Japanese to take the base tomorrow, uh, given that fortifications give you a defense multiplier, the fact that we lost our defense multiplier likely means that they'll have enough to overcome our defenses, that and the attrition. Nonetheless, the, the day that those troops bought was important. Uh, we've got various troops that are currently in the process of packing up and planning to move south. The 6th Indian Brigade, the 15th Indian Brigade, for example, those, te those need two and one more day respectively before they're on the trains headed south. That day should come in handy. The Japanese are going to have to advance west across the peninsula. Anyway, probably down this rail line. So they're several, you know, hundred uh, miles away from actually cutting this uh, western coast uh, rail line off anyway. Uh, let's see here. So we're in the process of pulling some of these uh, units out. We actually did uh, pull a RAF squadron of 10 Blenheims loaded as cargo and a uh, RAF squadron of 23 Buffaloes loaded as cargo. Those units were pulled out of Georgetown and are being evacuated out to Rangoon. Uh, so that should give Rangoon a little bit more of an air force uh, when they do arrive. Uh, meanwhile, let's see, is there anybody else still packing up? Uh, that's a coastal fort. We can't move them. Can we move these guys or are they static? Oh, we can move them. Wait, they're already packing? Oh. They're packing. They just haven't started moving yet, so they're, they're all packed up and ready to go. Okay, good. Um, see, these guys are all moving. They're not moving by rail. So these guys will probably move down to this hex on the next turn. Uh, meanwhile, some of these other units are also moving. Uh, they've all moved 34 miles out of a total destination of 270. Some of these units are moving by foot rather than by rail. Uh, and most of them, should we should see both of these units shift down by one hex. So these guys... Uh, the guy's currently in Taiping, uh, down here, uh, and then the other guy's just south. So getting close to getting out of out of the danger zone of being cut off by the Kotoburu fall if the Japanese advance rapidly. Meanwhile, our air groups here, based out of Kutan, uh, suffered pretty heavily last turn uh, to enemy interceptors. Uh, you can see the swordfish group was basically annihilated. The Viblisses, well, actually the swordfish weren't in action, but the Viblisses uh, lost uh, an aircraft. Um, so that's uh, something we've got to deal with. Um, we're always in swordfish. Is this swordfish ready? Can we like transfer it? I don't think I can. It doesn't have rail access, so it needs to be repaired first. Um, they're not really bombing Singapore, interestingly enough, which is getting my fighter aircraft up to pretty strong uh, strength here. You can see these... Uh, buffaloes are 50% set to uh, cap and 50% set to escort uh, at, uh, we'll say, 16,000, we'll say 18,000 feet. So actually, the Singapore base, he should be bombing Singapore. He's not. Uh, he's been focusing his effort north of Singapore, which does mean that these uh, these aircraft and, and defenses here are going to be much more uh, ready to deal with the enemy, including some Viblisses. So if he did try to, you know, he'd have to deal with what we've got. 154 aircraft, 116 of them are ready. Of those, we've got some uh, 50 fighters ready for action. And we've got uh, some 30 bombers, some medium bombers. And I think we've got, where are, do we have torpedo bombers? Those are heavy level dive bombers. No. Light bombers, maybe, they qualify as? No. Attack bombers? No. 
what the hell do they oh tv uh, and we've got 29 torpedo bombers based out of Singapore as well. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the enemy's going to face a, a bit of a tough enough to crack if they uh, try and land any troops. My main concern is if they try and land troops either Mersing or Johor Bahru, but with 30 torpedo bombers, I think that's a, a reduced risk. Now, one thing we do need to do here. You saw that used torpedoes was red. So I'm going to go to the 224 RAF group, and I'm actually going to uh, increase the number of torpedoes currently at the base. It does cost supply, but I'm not that worried about the total supply in Singapore. So I'm actually going to go ahead and spend some uh, supply to get more torpedoes in the base so we can use those against enemy shipping uh, next time our publicities or whatnot take off and, and go after the enemy. So now we have 100 torpedoes to use. And if we take a look here, we'll see the Viblisses now have used torpedoes is no longer red. So they will use torpedoes if they engage the enemy. Uh, meanwhile, I'm actually going to pull these Viblisses back. They don't have torpedoes anyway. So we're going to pull them back to Singapore. And they'll uh, join the subgroup there uh, and uh, start flying out of, out of Singapore. So that means Singapore now has some 32 torpedo bombers that are ready for action against the enemy should anything be foolish enough to kind of come into our into our, our range here. Um, these guys are moving west, so I would not be surprised. It looks like there's two task forces here moving west, including some heavies that could be going for Kutang, Kutang, however you pronounce that, Kutan. Uh, and if they do land there, again, that's another threat to cut our troops off, but they've got uh, quite a bit of either tough terrain or roaded terrain to advance across, so I think we should be able to pull most of our troops out in time. We're going to pull these guys back uh, to Johor Bahru. Now, my hope is they'd go for Mersing, if only because my torpedo bombers could play havoc on them. Uh, but my hunch is they probably won't do that. Um, all right, so we've got some submarines moving. We've got some task forces arriving in Surabaya, or however you pronounce that. We're going to go ahead and disband these forces here so they can kind of meet up with the other local forces. So we now have a battleship, a battle cruiser, seven light cruisers, and 14 destroyers based out of Java. Um, frankly, with all that fighter support, it might not be a bad idea to get a surface combat task force together. Uh, so I know these guys just came into port, but we're going to bring the Prince of Wales and the Repulse out, and then we're going to link them up with some of the local ships here as well. Anybody without any system damage, so we're going to leave the Meritress behind. We're going to go with some four light cruisers. I think they're all Dutch, or at least three of them are Dutch. Um, and then we're going to go with... We're going to go with four sort of surface-based destroyers, and we're going to go with three, the Electra, the Express, and the Jupiter destroyers that are heavy on anti-submarine warfare. Uh, so we're going to have a task force of 13 ships, we're going to go ahead and pick our Admiral, which is going to cost us something, but uh, it is what it is. It's going to be the highly aggressive and skilled Arthur Palisar, a rear Admiral. Cost us five political points. We have 238 available. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the task force destination to Singapore. And we're going to turn off retirement allowed. We're also going to replenish task force from port. Everybody should be at 100%. They are. Okay, so these guys are going to move up here to Singapore. I know I just pulled them out of the region, but that's what we're going to do. And then in the event that the enemy is landing at Kutan, I may take my chances. I've got fighter aircraft that I can issue cap orders, so they'll fly overhead of, uh, of, our, of our task force and uh, escort it. Now, if between now and then our uh, base at Singapore gets ravaged by enemy uh, enemy air raids, we can always pull out. But for the moment, we've got 139 aircraft uh, at Singapore. Um, what's the... We should be building fortifications here at Singapore. We've got zero. So we're going to start building that up. And we're also sucking supplies into Singapore. So despite spending all that, we still have over 55,000 supplies in Singapore, and I think because of its industrial base, it is building more as well. Um, meanwhile, we're going to leave the rest of all of that. These guys just moved into the rain, into this territory, so we just had a unit move into Champon, 
Uh, there's two enemy units here. Mainly I'm, I'm moving these guys in the hope to try and cut the rail line between Thailand and the Malay Peninsula to prevent the enemy from railing in uh, heavy reinforcements from uh, Southeast Asia. There's a couple of very good divisions like guard divisions that are down there that we want to try and uh, prevent them from moving if they haven't already moved them. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. You know, I don't really think much of anything has changed in the situation in China. Our troops are mostly all still moving into position. We've issued some orders, but guys haven't... Uh, these, these forces, generally speaking, take a while to move. Some of these guys don't actually have orders yet, but other ones do, like these guys over here. They've got move orders, and they've only traveled 19 miles. So I don't think there's anything to do in China yet. Um, it does look like we've moved some troops into um, Yichang. We've got additional troops moving there. But they're still... Oh, well, they're moving southwest. Southeast. So they're moving down here to cut off Yichang. What about these guys? They're moving to Yichang next turn. So actually we've got a pretty large battle brewing in Yichang. The enemy has substantial forces there, but I don't want to attack quite yet. So we're going to set these guys to combat, but we're going to wait for at least one more turn till our uh, additional reinforcements arrive. We don't have sufficient supplies for our forces in place. We've got 24,000 infantry, 19,000 secondary troops in line. Actually, if I attack and these guys arrive, they should join in the attack, right? Um, I think if I issue orders for them to combat, though, they won't continue moving. Oh, they will. Okay, so I'll set these guys to combat. And then I'm going to set... So hopefully they'll join in the attack, almost like a reserve coming in. And then I'm going to set everybody in this hex to shock attack. So all these units will commit a shock attack. Oh, that's how I do it. All right, so we're going to do a shock attack in Yichang. It's going to be our first large-scale Chinese assault uh, against uh, what uh, intelligence claims are three Japanese units. We'll see how accurate that is. The rest of my troops are all still moving. Hong Kong still hasn't fallen. They haven't even reduced the fortifications yet, down from three. Supplies in Hong Kong are actually still okay at 16,000. These guys are all still on the defensive, so I'm kind of surprised he's being a little bit more passive there than I would have expected. Uh, meanwhile, in the Philippines, he's landed troops at both Vigan and April. Or April. Uh, I don't have anything I can do really to deal with that. All of my troops from the southeast corner of Legebsi have all moved north. I want to know why my damn torpedo boats were so freaking useless. We're laying mines over here. Have they laid their mines yet? No, they still have ammo for that. So they should be laying that. Where do my torpedo boats go? Oh, here they are. Who's their commander? Inspiration, Lieutenant. Huh. What's your aggression? Basically none. All right, so these are, this is actually a Philippine unit. So we're going to go with Jay Alvarez. He's a 82 naval skill with 57 aggression. I could go with 77 aggression, 45 skill. Lieutenant commander. Should accept the change and should force him to actually fight. We'll send them into vegan here. I think we have a, we've got like a house rule that uh, PT boats, I think, have a max range of like one, but it's basically moving from one base to the next adjacent base, so that's fine. Um, our fighter base, our fighter forces are kind of decimated here in the Philippines this turn. But I was pretty happy with the results. Fatigue's still pretty low on all these guys. 
I mean, if we can get one-to-one -one casualty ratio, I am ecstatic with that. All right. Now, what I want to do here is with these bombers, actually, it's 19th Bomber Group, 14th Bomber Squadron, 30th Bomber Squadron. So I'm trying to pull some of these bombers out of Clark Field. 30th Bomber Squadron, 19th. So we're going to transfer these guys down south. All right, and what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to issue some orders for some strategic bombing. What the hell are these? Are these fighters? No. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to issue the orders. We've got 17 B-17s. We've got them flying at, uh, they should be 15,000 feet, I think, or, or where we want them at. We're going to have them do a ground attack, and we're going to have them bomb Japanese troops at Vegan, which is well within their range. We're going to set all bombers in this in this base to do that. So I'm going to try and send 17 B-17s off to Vegan, where the enemy's landing some troops. Although it looks like the majority of them are actually up, or to the east. So actually, let's change that target. Based on intelligence, it's not Vegan that's the issue. It's Apari. So we'll go ahead and bomb that. We'll see if the enemy has any uh, any fighter cover. I'm not really too worried, though. The B-17's pretty damn rugged. I don't think they're really going to be able to do much against us there. These guys are moving northwest, so they're probably going to land at Legepsi next turn. Um, and then the rest of my ships are all kind of escaping here. We're trying to... I don't think we suffered any damage on any of our destroyers, so that's good. I probably could have used the destroyers against some of these task forces here if they could have penetrated the uh, enemy cordon. Meanwhile, two PT boats here. The porpoise is going to be ready in one day. Ship's under repair, still okay. So I think that does it for the Philippines. Nothing really to do on Borno and the Dutch East Indies. We already looked at Singapore. Nothing to do in the India Theater. We already looked at China, at least as far as this turn's concerned. Australia's still kind of doing its own thing. No intelligence reports out this way. What is this? Southwest. Southeast. Are they headed to Baker Island? That'd be a little bit of a... What is this? Aggressive play there. Carriers are moving southwest, perhaps to Baker Island. So actually, he uh, appears to have swung his carriers out pretty damn quickly southwest this direction. Now, I don't know if they're just making a wide swing and they're going to go to Kwajalein or if they're trying to catch up with our carriers. I'm not really sure. There's still... Quite a bit of distance between them and us. So I think what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and have our carriers double back and head for Pearl to get within the uh, safety of Pearl. But I am going to go ahead and set a, a waypoint over here. So basically, they're going to go directly east, hopefully to get around these enemy submarines and their intelligence. And then they're going to approach Pearl from the northeast. So we'll set two waypoints for this carrier group. I'll make sure it's set to don't react. And then approach from that direction. We should have sufficient fuel for that. We do. Um, react is set to zero. Carriers. Well, these guys are flying buffaloes. God help them. Fatigue level is 11. We're going to increase the cap just in the event that the enemy does decide to somehow get within range. And then we're going to have this task force with the Enterprise. Its task force routing is going to be to follow the other carrier task force. So it's actually going to be two separate task forces sailing largely in tandem. Um, similarly, we're going to bump their cap up to 70 
Air fatigue's a little bit higher. They're also going to increase their altitude to 15,000. And then our surface combat uh, task force is going to also follow. So we're going to have all these guys kind of moving together and uh, back for home base. We'll see what the Japanese do with their carriers. It does seem a little bit concerning that he's... Uh, been able to swing out quite this far west, this quickly too. He got down here really fast. Uh, but we also have recon up north claiming enemy carriers too, so who knows? Maybe this isn't accurate. Maybe this is some other task force. If I knew it wasn't his carrier, his main carrier force, I'd be tempted to jump out front and try and ambush it, but I just don't know and I don't have the strength to see at the moment. I do want to wait one more turn before any large-scale resupply or shifting of troops or setting up convoys uh, just to give one more turn for these Japanese task forces to clear out a little bit to free up the, these sea zones. Um, we can see the Oklahoma is actually making pretty good progress. She's down to 11 system damage, 1 engine damage. She should be better in 20 days. She's on normal repair. What if I set her to low? Low actually is faster, so we're going to set her to low, low priority. And that just has to do with the current weight on the shipyards being very high. She doesn't really have any major damage to speak of. So actually, we could move her out of the shipyard and move her pier side. Set her to normal, it would still be 18 days. So we're going to do that. That'll lessen the burden on our, uh, um, on our shipyards here. The shipyard repair... Where are we at here? Yeah, so the used used level is just below the capacity now that I'm dropping uh, one of those ships out of the yard and moving it to pier side, so we'll only have three ships in the yard. Meanwhile, the Nevada could, well, what's the Nevada repairing at? High priority, critical, low, normal, high. Yeah, so we'll just cancel those changes. It's gonna be about three weeks for her in about three weeks, we should have two battleships ready to go with the fleet, so that's encouraging. Um, if we take a look here, not at repaired ships or repairing ships, we've got the heavy cruiser in New Orleans, San Francisco, our task force that we sent out here to engage the enemy, carriers that missed, uh, is, is back in port, I believe, or they should be. I don't actually see them on here. But they should be. Mm. Nothing out toward Midway. They still haven't gone for Wake. Again, maybe Baker is some very aggressive play. I mean, I could, I suppose he could always go for Baker. And these guys are moving southeast, so that's a risk, I guess. He could land troops on Baker, which is unoccupied, then land on Canton. And if he could do that, he'd really put our ability to sort of supply Australia at risk. We can still do it because of the way the, the map works, but we have to go way out of our way to do it. Um, so that is, it would certainly not be the, the best strategy for me to have to try and deal with. I also have one carrier in San Diego. Do I have any destroyers there to transport it? We do. So the only thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to set up major convoys yet, but the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start the process of getting Saratoga out toward uh, Pearl. And we're going to bring four destroyers with her. So there's still a lot of Japanese submarines around, but we're going to try and have the Saratoga move to Pearl, so we should have at least three carriers at Pearl Harbor as sort of the primary striking force for us. Meanwhile, I think, is there anything up here? There's Seattle. We've got two battleships in Seattle. I think one of those is British. So we'll form a surface task force up here to get these ships to Pearl Harbor. Well, actually, no, they're still. So the Warspite and the Colorado both just recently went underwent overhauls. So they're currently repairing up there. Why is the Colorado 45 days, huh? We're going to set it to critical, get it done in 14. 
The worst bite should be done. In 11. Right, so both those ships are stood down and repairing. I think they both underwent upgrades recently. Um... Yeah, so I think that'll probably about do it for this turn. I need to set up some training uh, regimes, if you will, and we'll probably get to that next turn, um, I think. I, I've been waiting. This turn's been more than too long coming. I've been uh, kind of slacking and getting these things out. So I'll, I'll, I'll get that taken care of next turn. Um, so we'll set all fighters to this. We'll set the cap up at 60, just in the event that uh, the enemy tries to... Actually, we'll set it to 50, because I do want them fresh. When the carriers get close, I'm going to put a, a cover over them. So right now, Pearl is in the process of recovering. Our fighter task force is up to 135 ready fighter aircraft. Our bombing force is up to 51 aircraft, medium and heavies. And our torpedo force is negligible. Our dive bomber force is 17, a single group of Dauntlesses. So we don't have a huge striking power, but we do have a good umbrella of aircraft overhead. The repair to the port and the airfield and the service is all uh, in the process of getting better. And uh, that's currently the situation in the Pacific. So that's going to do it for our December, our December 10th turn. Uh, not a lot of other big developments. Ships are in transit. People are moving around. Um, the Houston, actually, I'm going to go ahead and order these guys to meet this task force over here, the Surface Combat Task Force. So we're going to have the USS Houston meet those guys. To give them a little bit more oomph with a heavy cruiser supporting them. Um, actually, let's have the Boise join them too. Okay, so we're going to have the light cruiser Boise and the heavy cruiser Houston join the surface task force coming out of the Dutch East Indies with a battle cruiser and battleship. So we'll have one battleship, one battle cruiser, uh, one heavy cruiser, and uh, five light cruisers as well as a flotilla of destroyers for a total of 15 ships under an aggressive and capable admiral under Arthur Palliser. Uh, and uh, we're going to sail them up to Singapore. I don't think we're actually going to get all the way to Singapore. Mainly it's just to serve as a deterrent in case the enemy does decide to land at Mersing or land at Jorjor Baru. My main thought is if they do that landing, then I can kind of keep my task force south of Singapore here under a blanket of air cover, sprint it at night, bombard the enemy force, or engage any, tr any ships offloading, and then pull back. That would kind of be my thought. We'll see if that is something that materializes. But that would be my thought at any event. Uh, meanwhile, we do have a heavy cruiser over here. It's the Cornwall. Um, so is that the only heavy cruiser we have around here? Actually, no. We've got a force of the Exeter and Enterprise. So um, task force destination. These guys are also going to head for that, but they're going to head to Merrick first. So they're going to... We're going to have a task force at the Exeter Enterprise in Glasgow, which is going to move to the west of Sumatra and to the northern tip of the Dutch East Indies. Uh, so we could theoretically add two heavy cruisers and two more light cruisers to that force. Really would start bringing us up, up to parity to anything the Japanese could bring to bear. Uh, we'll go ahead and meet these guys. The air cover is going to be the biggest issue, but I'm not feeling confident enough to deploy Hermes, which I think is the only British carrier in the region uh, to that force, mainly because it's a, a force on a mission of surface combat, and all she does is carry like 12 swordfish dive bombers. So, um, yeah, not not something I feel like doing, being quite that bold yet. Like Cruiser and Aiden tankers over there. And then Mombasa, some, okay. So I think, and these guys are going to arrive with uh, supplies, right? Yeah, so some British uh, supplies, uh, actually troops, are going to head into Singapore that way. 
I don't know if we'll actually send them to Singapore. We might divert them, but in any event. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this turn, December 10th, 1941. You saw the results of the last turn. Air-to-air -air combat, pretty active. I was pretty happy with the casualties we inflicted on the enemy. They inflicted slightly more on us than us on them, but overall I think that was a you know, one-to-one -one or nearly one-to-one -one is probably a victory for us. And uh, just decided to kind of get some troops moving around and getting some things ready. So we're in the process of... Uh, moving troops to uh, defend the Philippines. Um, what else is here? These guys. I'm just trying to figure out, like, we probably don't want. Um, all right, we probably want everyone over here to do the same thing as that. So really kind of Clark Field is is the route back to Bataan. Sort of a forward defense set up here at Ling Yang, Ling Yang, or however you pronounce that, just in the event the Japanese decide to try and end around us and, and land before we're ready. These guys are moving to Manila. I guess some of these troops are newly raised, so they weren't moving, but now they all should. Aviation engineer should go straight to Clark. Meanwhile, these troops in Manila, we've got quite a few troops, 6,000 infantry, uh, 16,000 support troops in Manila with a reasonable amount of supplies there as well. So they're building fortifications. Batan is building fortifications. And Clark Field is building fortifications. Um, these guys are pulling back. All looks good. Sabu should build some tr forts. Loyal should build some forts. These guys should move over here so they've got as many engineer units as possible. All right, and I think that will do it for this turn. Is this a port? Does this have any? It does have port facilities. Damn. The problem is on the southern island, I don't have much in the way of troops, and I sure as hell have a lot of vulnerable points where the enemy could land. Kaigan is the main base that I think we want to defend but there's just not good transportation down here, and Davos, the other kind of major facility, so um, kind of depends on where the enemy wants to go. But I'm not going to be able to stop any real committed landing on Kaigan. Do we have any troops there now? We do have a constabulary regiment. Uh, okay. So with that being said, guys, that is going to do it for this episode. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out. Take that, XTRG. We're going to get you. <laughs>